Atit mga kuya, welcome back to Puto Mendoza in Canada. So, nandito tayo ngayon sa office ni Mrs. Dahil gusto raw niya ng inspirasyon. So, magkatabi kami. So, she's actually behind the camera working right now while I'm making this video. So, guys, marami pong nagtatanong, marami pong nagsasabi, Kuya Puto, but karamihan po ng mga videos ninyo, it's always about cars, bahay, or transformers. Well, guys, yung po passion ko. Koche, bahay, and collectibles. So, naisip ko po, since uh, housing is such a big, big issue ngayon dito sa Canada, all over Canada dahil sobra ng mahal, why don't we talk about housing? So, naisip ko po, why don't we spend some time with this video so Kuya Puto can tell you all the different types of houses that are available for sale dito sa Canada. That way you have an idea, okay, where people are living and the pros and cons of each type of dwelling. Type of dwelling. So, why don't we do that right now? So guys, the first type of uh, house that we're going to talk about are condominiums. Because we're going to start from small to big. Okay? Yung mga condominiums, typically, dalawang klase yan eh. There's the really, really tall ones, mga, mga high-rises that you see sa mga downtown areas, okay? Those are condominiums. And there's also townhouse condominiums, like low-rise. Para siyang row. Para, imagine uh, like a vertical, like a horizontal box. Divide, 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 divide into units. Each one is considered a unit. But uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the high-rise condominiums, okay? So like I said, go to any downtown core of any city. You're going to see tons of big, tall, 50-story, 60-story, 70-story buildings, right? Those are condominiums. And they are typically uh, one bedroom, two bedroom. The older ones have some three bedroom units, you know, one bathroom, two bathroom, three bathroom. Some even offer studio. Studio is uh, wala siyang bedroom, guys. Ano lang, uh, just kitchen, uh, bathroom, and living room. And, uh, you know, you just put a bed like wherever you feel like putting a bed. <laughs> so typically, yung mga condominiums, guys, they are small. Okay, they're about... 350 to maybe 800 square feet. That's average. But you know what? The sky's the limit because there are many, many luxury condos out there that are way better than a big house, okay, space-wise. So condos are good if you're trying to enter the market. Typically, yung mga bata, yun ang gusto, gusto nila because they want to live the big city life. They want to be way up there in the sky and then when they go out into that balcony, they see the whole city, right? Problema don, that comes with a price. Condos are not cheap. Well, housing is not cheap in general. But even though it's considered the cheapest form of dwelling, it's not. It's still not cheap. <laughs> You're paying a lot for price per square foot, like dollar per square foot. Uh, typically, sa Toronto, an average one-bedroom condo is about 650000 700000 mga ganon. You can find cheaper ones, but that's the average price, right? And on top of that price, you have condo fees. So guys, mahal po ang condo fees because you have to understand, you have to buy the condo for whatever price it sells for. And on top of that, you still have to pay condo fees. And that's part of any condominium building that you buy, I guess, anywhere in Ontario, anywhere in Canada. It's just part of it, right? So pros and cons. Uh, condos, masarap doon. Social ka. Feeling professional ka doon. Dahil isipin mo, everything is modern, everything is beautiful, everything is close to all the amenities. Alright? Restaurants, bars, gyms, uh, grocery stores, shopping. It's usually very, very close by because that's where they situate condominiums, di ba? But that comes at a price. And most condominiums, guys, they offer amenities within the condo unit or the condo building. So gyms, bars, movie theaters, swimming pools, spas, usually all in one yen. But, like I said, 
you're paying for the experience and it comes at a cost, right? So we've lived in a condo and I liked it. I'm not going to lie. Problema lang dun. Number one, and dami mong neighbors. <laughs> okay. Number two, it's usually young people. Eh, matanda na kami. So, you know. Uh, ano pa ba? The elevator sucks. Especially if you live in the high floors because the, the wait times for the elevators is terrible. And just imagine, you know, taking the elevator during rush hour. You know, when people are going to work in the morning and when people are coming home at night. Same thing with the parking. Parking sucks because usually, you know, parking is underground. And by the time you get from your parking spot to the front door, well, the front gate, you know, it's usually five, six, seven minutes. And that sucks. All right. But everything else, guys, it's a beautiful experience. La Luna, if you're young and you want to experience the city life, you know, that's why they're so popular with young couples or young professionals, because everything that you want as a young person is so close by and so accessible. So that's condos. So the second type of property that we're going to talk about are townhouses. Townhouses in my opinion, is one step above the condominium. 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 Dahil, it's, uh, it's basically a house. It's, it's, a, it's a house. That's what it is. So guys, with townhouses, instead of building this way, like a normal house, they build up. Because, lalo na ngayon, uh, land is at such a high premium. Napakamahal po ng lupa. So what they do, yung mga builders, uh, they try to fit as many units as they possibly can on an allocated piece of land where they're building these townhouses. Okay? So they can't really build this way, so they build that way, and then they create so many units, and then they stick them together. So that's a townhouse. Are they nice? Yeah! They're very, very nice. But like anything else, they come at a very, very steep price. It's one step above a condo, in my opinion. It's an actual house, but it's this way. Okay? So typically, yung mga townhouses, guys, lalo na yung mga bago, they have one, two, three, maybe even four levels. Okay? Because they maximize the height as opposed to the width of the home, right? And they're very modern, they're very beautiful, and typically, yung mga townhouses, when they build it, lalo ni mga, mga modern ones, it's a community of townhouses. Alright? So, isang malaking subdivision kayo, purus townhouses. So, there's some restrictions also, alright? Depending on, you know, the type of property and where it is and who's managing it. And there's also a slight uh, maintenance fee. Because obviously somebody has to shovel the snow, somebody has to take care of the plants, you know, somebody has to take care of the common elements outside. But it's not as bad and it's not as expensive as the condo fees that you would pay at a typical high-rise condo. So usually townhouses are very popular with young professionals or young couples with small children that are just trying to get their foot into the real estate market and they do not want to live in a high-rise building. So, you know, they're great like that. So, sa Toronto po, depending on the type of townhouse and depending on the location, like I said, everything depends on location and where it is and the type and how big, right? Because really, in real estate, sky's the limit. Really is, the sky's the limit. So, typically for uh, an average townhouse at Toronto, on a brand new, you're looking at anywhere between eight fifty to a million dollars. You know, there's older neighborhoods, obviously, you know, prices might be lower. But at the same time, you know, you won't have all the, the, the modern amenities that are brand new built. So we're just talking brand new builds right now, okay? Obviously, there's tons, there's thousands of resale homes that are previously loved. But in this video, we're talking strictly about brand new builds, okay? So on a brand new build townhouse... It's a greater Toronto area, like I said, anywhere between age 50, a million and above. That's what you're going to typically expect to pay. Okay? So, 
the next type of house, and I think this is one above the townhouse, is a semi-detached home. Kuya puto, ano ba semi-detached home na yan? It's exactly what it is. Semi-detached. A detached home is a single house. A semi-detached home is half a house. So, they still build those and they're very, very popular because, like I said, in my belief, it's one step above the townhouse. Okay? So, basically what it is, it's half a house. So, imagine one full house like this, split it in the middle, and you buy on the left side or on the right side, that's a semi-detached home. Okay, so you share one common wall with your neighbor. That's a semi-detached home. So basically, it's a house. It's an actual house house. Okay, and they're big. They can, sorry, they can be big. They're very luxurious. They're very beautiful. And it's a house. It's just half a house. Some of them got three bedroom, four bedroom, five bedroom. You know, basement, garage, backyard, front yard, everything that you would expect from a traditional home, it has. But it, it's split between you and your neighbor. You share a common wall. So, is it a good investment, Kuya Puto? Is it a good house? Yes, of course it is. Because it's one above the townhouse. Okay? It's one level above the townhouse, in my opinion. Kaya lang, eto problema dun. The fact that you're sharing a common wall with your neighbor, paano kung yung neighbor ninyo maingay? You know? What if they keep on knocking on the wall making noise? You can't control that. What if all of a sudden, you know, your roof needs to be replaced? Like I'm talking years ahead. Like I said, we're talking about brand new builds. Obviously, if it's, if it's a brand new build, you won't have to worry about that. But these are potential future problems that you might have to face if you end up buying a semi-detached house. The roof. You know? We bought a semi-detached house a long time ago. And we had a problem with our neighbor when it came to the roof. Because, you know, we didn't buy brand new back then. So the roof needed to fix after a couple of years of living in it. And we had some disagreements with the neighbor because he thought that we could squeeze a couple more years out of it. And, you know, madaming reason. They may not have the funds to get it done when you want to get it done or whatever reason, you know, that might cause a disagreement between you two. That it's not just, you can't fix your side and not fix his side because it's one house, right? So, yeah. So roof, noise, uh, what else? The fence in the backyard, you're going to have to figure that out between you and your neighbor. Because, you know, you can't really make a move unless you have his permission. Because, you know, hati kayo, diba? Or even worse, if you have some kind of plumbing issue and the plumbing is located on that shared wall that you guys have separating the two properties. That's a big headache. So, yeah, it does come with its disadvantages. But it's definitely, definitely, definitely one level up from the townhouse. So... Number four, guys, this is, I guess, everybody's ultimate dream is to own a detached home. A detached home is a home on a piece of land that's not attached to anything else. It's just you. You own the home. It's not attached to nothing. You own the land that it's sitting on, and that's all yours. That's everybody's, uh, everybody's dream. Problema po dun. Yung presyo. You know, as as you've seen in my previous videos, I've touched up on this. You know, minimum million dollars. The limit, sky's the limit after that, you know. But the minimum is a million dollars. But on a brand new build, if you want a, de a detached home, so Toronto, man, maybe 1.6, 1.7 million dollars or more depending on the neighborhood and how big it is. And don't expect it to be on a big piece of land because land is at a premium. You know, if you go for uh, a resale home, like, you know, a used home. It's not a used home. It's a resale home. Home that's been previously loved or, previ or previously lived in. You know, the, the piece of land, the property itself might be a lot bigger. Like the land that the house is sitting on. But at the same time, you're going to pay a, a good penny for it. 
So like I said, you know, they, they can range anywhere from from three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twenty, fifty bedrooms, sky's the limit. And you know, you can have one, two, three, four garages, basements, you know, uh, big backyard pools. I mean, sky's the limit. You know, sky's the limit. So, yeah, that's everybody's ultimate dream is to end up with a, de a detached home. So. All of these properties that I just told you guys, they have two things in common. One is all of them, you're obligated by law to pay property taxes. You can't get away from that. The bigger the property, the more property taxes you owe end up paying or you will end up paying or you will end up owing to pay the Canadian government. Okay, that's a guarantee. Walang takasan yon. But on the flip side, given enough time, guys, you will earn equity. You will earn equity. And not only will you earn equity, you would have had some use out of it because you're living in it. Okay? So that's the good news on the flip side. Sabi nga po ng mga real estate uh, partners namin, you know, if you buy a home dito sa Canada, expect to live in it for at least five years. To break even. Okay? Forget what happened during the pandemic. Because that's a complete anomaly in the industry. Alright? So, basically what they're saying. You buy a house. Keep it for five years. If you want to sell it. Okay? It would have accumulated enough equity that you would make a little bit. And get your money back to move on to the next house. Right? So what's happened during the pandemic is everything blew up, including house prices. And they, the professionals, think that's it's an anomaly. It's something uh, chamba. <laughs> so a lot of people that bought and sold made a lot of money. Okay, But uh, now that everything is being calibrated again, back to normal levels, if you buy something now, Expect to live in it. Expect to live in it. Enjoy it. Live in it. Enjoy it. And you know what? At the end, susukli ang kapanyan. Because isipin nyo, nagamit nyo, tiniran nyo. Tapos pag binenta nyo years on, babayaran pa kayo niyan. Like for us, that's one way that we have discovered how to level up uh, in life dito sa Canada is through real estate there's many other ways but through real estate you know it's one way to to definitely level up you just gotta be patient okay so sana naman po nakatulong to kahit konti kahit konti kung di pa pa kayo nakapag-subscribe kahit kuya po to subscribe naman po kayo so we can grow this as big as we can so join us on the next video guys this is Puto Mendoza in Canada wishing you good night good morning good afternoon wherever you are in the world stay hungry Stay humble. Keep your hustle strong and I will see you. Kita no more sa akin Kung sino ng akin mahal